What is up you sexy YouTube mother lovers? Today we are going to be doing a video on a bizarre but true story that I had no idea about until just a couple days ago. It involves our favorite villain, I mean a uh, regulatory agency and an, an adult an adult sex toy. Let's just jump right in. So by now, I'm sure if you've been in the gun circles on the internet for any length of time, you've probably seen pictures like this. The good old fleshlight arm brace meme has been around for a little while. Pretty funny meme, especially back in the days when there was a bit of a debate as to whether or not you could legally shoulder your arm brace or whether or not that was manufacturing an SPR according to the ATF. And until they listened to Biden and changed that, technically right now it's not. So shoulder away. But what was happening a lot in those days was people writing opinion letters. You know, repeatedly asking the ATF, hey, is this okay to do? Am I allowed to shoulder my arm brace? Which is really irritating for a while because it was giving the ATF more opportunities to crack down on certain things. You know, just stop writing letters, guys. But it did apparently lead to some hijinks, which I was completely unaware of until just recently and thought it was more than deserving of a video. Some mad lad actually hired an attorney to write a formal inquiry to the ATF's technology branch as to whether or not an arm brace with a flashlight in it, when properly used, right, like you would assume, was legal under the NFA or not. And the ATF responded. Now I've got a copy of the letters in front of me. We're gonna be reading those and I'll be putting those up. But first, we are gonna thank our sponsor. Trust me, we tried to get Fleshlight to sponsor this video, but uh, they, they, they had their hands busy. Premier Body Armor is an American-made body armor company providing quality armor for people in all walks of life. Premier Body Armor's mission is kind of to become the concealed carry of body armor. Basically, they're making products that can seamlessly integrate into your daily carry, which I bet you didn't even notice, but this whole video so far, I've actually been wearing their level 3A executive protection vest. Although you were probably wondering why I was wearing a hoodie in the middle of spring in Texas. Anyway, from concealable armor to hard plates to backpack armor, Premier Body Armor makes a whole bunch of cool stuff. If you want to check them out, go ahead and use the link down in the description and use the code AKGUY to get 10% off. And definitely give them some love because they were willing to sponsor a video revolving around fleshlights. Alright, so let's go ahead and delve into this ATF letter. Ma'am or sir, I am writing to you in regards to related technical questions raised by one of my clients. Despite the apparent content of the questions, I believe my client is quite serious about the questions and that your answers would certainly be interesting and helpful to the firearm manufacturing and using community as a whole. So right off the bat, I'm pretty sure this attorney knows what he's getting himself into. Certainly, given the financial implications to my client, it should be addressed as any other technical letter from a person concerned about the NFA implications of their proposed firearm modifications. Financial implications. The term financial implications implies that he was planning on selling these. And I'm sad we live in a world where that didn't happen. <laughs> In a previous technical letter from your office, you determined that shouldering a SIGTAC SB-15 pistol stabilizing brace would be an improper use of said brace and automatically convert the attached pistol or firearm into a short-barreled rifle or short-barreled shotgun without a proper NFA tax stamp. Thankfully, by the way, this is no longer the case. But this was submitted October 17th of 2016, so that was right kind of in the midst of that whole debacle. Since that determination, a popular internet meme letter had circulated purporting to ask for the technical specifications of the term shouldering and whether or not the SB-15 must be shouldered between the shooter's brachial joint extending to the collarbone or if shouldering would occur should the SB-15 be firmly rested in order to assist firing against any pocket or portion of the human body. I don't like where this is headed. That initial parody letter was addressing specifically the idea of mounting a fleshlight sex toy to the SB-15 and stabilizing the pistol or firearm using the male crotch and penis. This is clearly using 2016 vernacular. Had this been written in 2021, they would have made sure to specify that it could have either been the male or female crotch and penis. My client appears to actually be considering modifying an SB-15 in that exact manner for attachment to an AR-15 pistol or shotgun-derived firearm. This is my favorite part of the letter. 
It is not my place to inquire, nor do I want to know, if it is for the purpose of an adult film or for catering to a particular sexual fetish. But it is my duty to make sure my client is legally covered in their enterprise. That was legalese for, man, I just work here. That is my favorite wording, though. It's not my place to inquire, nor do I want to know. Totally unnecessary for the letter, but at least this attorney had a sense of humor. Therefore, I ask the following questions using the attached image, which was apparently created by the original writer of the parody letter, as an example of my client's intent. 1. What exactly constitutes improper shouldering of a SIGTAC SB15 pistol stabilizing brace in terms of placement within the pocket between the brachial joint and the collarbone? and in terms of the percentage of the rear surface area of the brace placed within said pocket, and the firmness with which the brace rests against said area of the human body. Getting oddly specific with that. Number two, getting to the real questions here. If shouldering is inclusive of firmly pressing said brace against other areas of the body, would the pistol or firearm be considered shouldered if the attached SIGTAC SB15 brace was modified to include a flashlight or dildo sex toy and then pressed firmly onto or into a person's genitals. There's so <laughs> there's so many directions I could go with this. It's 2016, bump stocks were still legal back then. You could turn your self-gratification arm brace into a basically de facto machine gun. I'm just gonna keep reading. Question number three. Related to the answers to those questions, if shouldering is dependent upon the total area pressed firmly into the pocket adjacent to the collarbone, would such a modification as described in the second question be shouldered if pressed firmly into that area or would the general narrowness and unsuitability of the modification for traditional stabilization leave it outside the definition of shouldering? I know this is a weird one. No. But I appreciate your taking the time to address these questions in a professional and timely manner. Sincerely, said attorney who we will blur, uh, mostly out of respect, and might I say I'm a big fan. I really hope you charged accordingly. Personally, this is the kind of inquiry that I would have asked uh, TFB's James Reeves to file because, frankly, that would be hilarious. Ah, but at the end here, attachments. Internet found image of SIGTAC SP-15 pistol stabilizing brace modified with fleshlight sex toy. Now, this is a pretty funny joke, I hope. And in all reality, that probably should have been where this ended. Ah, but we got another little cherry on top for this one. The ATF actually responded. U.S. Department of Justice, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. Dear Mr. Blank, this is in reference to your correspondence dated October 17, 2016 to the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, ATF, Firearm Technology Industry Services Branch. FTISB respectfully declines to respond to your inquiries regarding the SIGTAC SB15 pistol with the fleshlight attachment. Sincerely yours, the Chief of Firearms Technology Industry Services Branch. I would like to think the reason why this climbed all the way to the top to the chief of the technology branch of the ATF is because nobody knew what the fuck else to do with this. I mean, the man hired an attorney. I mean, do you at least, at least give him a call back. Honestly, I think all of this was worth it just for the fact that the ATF was forced into replying and including the word fleshlight in a formal letter. Anyhow, I just thought this was fucking funny because I read this for the first time a few days ago and I pretty much laughed the whole fucking time and thought, my God, there has to be a video on this because somehow if I've never found out about this, odds are a lot of you guys haven't either. So I thought this was really fun. If you'd like to see more weird firearm history and ATF stuff like that in the future, please let me know because I actually had a lot of fun with this video. Oh, and big thanks to Premier Body Armor for being cool enough to sponsor a video more or less about fleshlights. Anyway, if you want to see more videos like this, let me know down in the comments, especially if you have specific instances that you would like me to cover. Anyways, guys, that's all I've got for you today. I appreciate it. And as always, I will see you sexy YouTube mother lovers in the next video. Thanks. Fear is my obsession to make the perfect weapon like us put his eyes to the top. But I can't let you can stop, can stop, can stop, can stop, can stop, can stop. So by now, I'm sure if you've been on the internet in the gun sphere for any no fuck. Thank God I'm wearing a dark shirt because I'm sweating like a son of a bitch.
Despite the apparent content of the questions, I believe my quiet... My quiet. My quiet. My quiet is quite serious.